Hey everyone, welcome back. In the next 15 minutes, we're going to have a look at connecting VCF operations as well as SDDC manager to your online depot using your token. There are, we're not covering the offline method in this video, but if you do want to see that, put it in the comments. After that, we're going to look at some logs to make sure that we are in fact connecting to the online depot and how to troubleshoot it if you're not able to get to it. After that, we're going to deploy VCF operations for logs using the downloaded binaries and then from start to finish, go through that deployment process. If you're following on from the last video, we've now upgraded operations to version nine. It's now VCF nine compatible. And it's also as part of that opera, uh, that task deployed the fleet manager appliance, which is essentially copied all the data from the ARIA lifecycle Mandarin appliance into the fleet manager appliance, which will now take care of life cycling. We did cover that in the last video. So if you want to see what that looks like, go back to that video and you can see that in the description, there's a link to the previous video as well. In this one, we're going to continue on with what we need to do. So that means we want to upgrade logs. So that gets added into ARI Operations 9, do Aon or ARI Operations for Networks and anything else that I've missed in my thought process. But effectively, this is where we're at now. If you have a look at this document, again, will be in the description as with any, any of the resources that I'm going to use, I'll put them into the description. So we've done the ARIA Suite Lifecycle 818. We've done, we've used that to upgrade operations and install the fleet manager appliance. Now we're going to use the fleet manager appliance to deploy uh, VCF automation or upgrade automation and operations for networks and also logs. Now, because I am on SDDC version nine, pre-token days, uh, and for obvious reasons, I can't show you how to generate a token, but there are other blogs out there that show offline utility, which I can also cover. If you want to see that, put that in the comments, but I'm going to use the online one online method using a token, which I will leave for you to figure out how to get the token. But effectively to get SDDC manager using a token, there are some steps that need to be taken because remember before we had username and password. Now we're using a bearer token, which will then go and authenticate and give us the access that we need to be able to download the binaries. So again, this will be in the description for the link. The link will be in the description, but we need to follow some steps to, I get, this is how you generate a token. We need to get SDDC manager seeing the token method. So I won't open this link here and I'm going to follow this. Uh, I won't go through step by step, but you'll see me do this as part of the video. So I'll get cracking on that now. Now, if you've had a look at the link, you know that you're going to have to make some changes to SDDC manager as per its recommendation in the link, as well as any changes that you typically make to SDDC manager or a database or config, take a snapshot beforehand so you can revert if anything does go wrong. So quickly take a quick snapshot. Looks like I've got other snapshots here. I'm going to clean them up first. Cool. That's done. I will take a snapshot now. Give it a useful name just in case there are others. I don't need the virtual machine memory. I'll hit create on that. If you've had a look at the link, there are two methods. There's a scripted method and then there's the manual method. If you've seen any of my videos, I prefer the manual method so that I can walk through the process, know exactly what's going on and also show you how to troubleshoot and diagnose if anything does go wrong. So I'm going to SSH onto SDDC manager and we'll get through the configuration together. As you would normally, you SSH into SDC manager as the VCF account, and then you SU to root to make any significant changes. Cool. We're there now. Now we'll continue on with the document or the KV article. Now we need to edit the application prod properties file to do that. You can use nano, you can use via whichever you prefer, but effectively we just need to hit that, open it up and look for the configuration changes or the section with the configuration that we need to change. I've now made the changes required. I've obviously grayed out what I couldn't show you. Now you want to write that file and then you want to restart the services. We'll give that a couple of minutes to come back. I'm going to jump onto SDDC manager now. Let's have a look and see if it's up and running and it's working. We are in, I'll go to depot configuration. 
which I've forgotten. There it is. Um, authenticate. You click on the authenticate button and then you put in the account that you've got that's got access to the binaries and the password for that account. For security reasons, I've bypassed that part of this video just so you you know, I can, I don't have to sit there blacking things out. It doesn't make it very useful for you anyway. And as you can see here, I've got the username blacked out as well. Now, if all worked, you should see deep, depot connection active. So that means we should be able to now pull down the binaries that we require. But to do that, I'm actually going to jump back into operations manager and do it from there. I'm back in operations, operations manager and yes, it's ignore all the warnings. It's not the healthiest environment, but more realistic for you guys. Let's go to fleet management and we'll go to lifecycle. Wait, let this load. I need to download some components. Let's add a component. We'll go, uh, before we do that, I need to download the binary. Sorry, let's do that. Uh, apparently, according to this, depot con connection is not configured. So what that's telling me is we've enabled SDDC manager to have the depot connection. But this is relying on LCM or what was LCM, but now Fleet Manager to also have a depot connection. So let's go and sort that out now before we move on. All right, really quickly, let's click on configure. Click on online depot, select download token. I'm going to create a new token because I haven't added it yet. So effectively, all you're doing is you get your bearer token that you generate or that you download from the support portal and that's the credentials that we're looking for there's no username and password but that's what we're looking for as the password so i'll quickly get that sorted and we'll come back i accept if you want to view the certificate details it'll fetch them as long as this appliance has got access to the internet it should be able to get out or proxy so connection timed out that tells me um, because I deployed a new fleet appliance as part of the last video, it has a new IP address and in the back end, I did not give it external access to the depot or, you know, dl.broadcom.com on 443. So I'm going to go do that. We'll come back and then that this should start working. All right. I've made that change in the firewall. Uh, if you want to do, if you do want to troubleshoot, you can also SSH onto the fleet manager appliance. And we can have a look at the logs. Actually, we might do that now just so I can show you which log and what to look for. All right, let's jump into CD var log. Well, quick look in here. Has anything changed? Uh, we want to go to the VR LCM folder and here you should see a vrlcm uh, log there we go so that's the one that we want so we'll tail that and then what we do is we hit go on the depot connection and let's bring this back up okay i think that is good this time around now you can see that depot connection is active. Jump into binary management. Let's do some upgrade binaries. We'll get all of those. See what's on the patch binaries. So I'm not seeing anything. I see a logs one, which is under install binaries, but not under upgrade binaries. Ignore what I previously just said. I did a bit of digging and it turns out you need to deploy a brand new instance of logs as there's no current upgrade path from 8.18 to 9. So I'll jump back into Lifecycle. We'll go into binary management. Grab the install binary for logs. Wherever it is, there it is. Download that and then we'll pull that down and deploy a fresh one and we'll go through that together. As we can see here, RA operations or VCF operations for logs has now been downloaded. I want to go in and deploy it now. So we're going to components, add component logs. We're doing a new install. 
You can do a standard or a cluster deployment. I'm going to do a standard in my environment, but think about for your scale and size if you need to do cluster. I'll hit next. I don't have a certificate for it yet. Uh, well, I can create one, but apparently there's one there. So I'll generate one or import if you have one. I've quickly punched in all the details there. Change your key length if you need to. I'm just leaving it at 2048. I'm not too concerned about this in my environment. Alias, common name, org details, and I'm putting this on an overlay network. So I'll hit generate. Hit save. So that's the one that I've just created. And I did mention overlay network. Remember, this is an upgraded environment from VCF 5.2. So I already had AVNs in place. If you have a look at the description, there's a link to a video about AVNs and deploying stuff onto it. I'll hit next on that. I'll select the vCenter. I want it in the region that I've got. Select the cluster. I'll leave this all as default. And here we go. I'm putting it on the cross-region network from VCF 5.2 days. And the data store will be on the quick data store that I've got. Disk mode, I'm putting it on thin. Again, customize this to your environment and what you need. I'm not using a content library for this. Domain name is shape.com. Domain search path is the same. Now the server selection, it should have already picked all this stuff up. Nope, there's no servers. I will add a new DNS server. There we go. NTP. Edit server selection. Okay, it doesn't exist there either, so I'll re add it here. Submit. That's good to go. The default gateway for this subnet on the AVN network is dot one and it's a slash 24. Hit next. All right, node size, I'll go with a medium for my environment. I don't need it to be FIPS compliant. If you need it to be, you can then turn this on if you need to. I don't need any anti-affinity rules because I'm only deploying one node. If you're deploying three, your anti-affinity or affinity rules is so you keep them separate. So if you have one host that goes down, you don't lose the, the, the cluster or majority of the cluster. Yes, we'll configure a cluster VIP. I don't need to do this because I'm deploying new. Use English, I'll leave this default. Admin, I'll just call it admin. Component password, I'm going to pick a password. And there we go, NTP server's already got that added. Time sync mode, use NTP, up to you, but typically I would always go with NTP anyway. Cluster VIP, let me quickly put all these details in and we'll go through it together. All right, let's quickly go through this. So we've already gone through all these details, medium VCF logs, that's all fine. Now for the cluster VIP, you do need to create a DNS record for this and I'm calling it vcflogs.shame.com. IP address on the AVN or overlay network is 10.100.041. And then you go to the node details. I'm calling the VM's name VCF logs. The FQDN is vcflogs.1.shank.com and the IP address is .42, which is the next sequential IP address up. I'll hit next on that. Oh, timed out. All right, and then we'll hit next on that. Run the pre-check. Let's see if there's any issues and we'll come back. Pre-check failed on certificate validation and that's because I didn't add the VIP and FQDN note into the certificate. So if we jump backwards and we go to the certificate page. Oh, that's gonna be over here. My mistake was further back. So if we, I'm just going to create a new certificate and I'll clean this one up later. It's the same thing. So I won't go back through the process, but I'm going to create the new certificate with the logs of VIP cluster FQDN as well as the node. I've gone back through the first instance of where you see that certificate is on the second page. As you recall, where you generate a certificate, just be mindful. I did get caught out when I didn't show you when you're doing the infrastructure validation or the configuration, there's another section where you have to select that new certificate. So if we have a look now, that certificate has passed, but we have failed on password validity. So this will get out 
cat, caught it, catch out a lot of people. My standard default password, which is that P8 password, is not strong enough for this. I need to jump back into that password section, which is, I believe was in the infrastructure. And you select your password. Nope, sorry, it's the next one across. Keep going. Medium, VCF log V, that's that other certificate section that I was talking about. So this is the password. So I need to select a new password that should work. If there isn't one there, I will create one. I'll create one and come back. So I'll hit save and exit on this and come back after creating the password. So right now I've created a new password. I won't show you what it is for <laughs> obvious reasons, but I'll click add on that. And to do so, it's in the same page. You just scroll up and click on add password. And then hopefully that's not, has an auto selected it. So I'll select that password now. Everything else should be good still. I'll go through. I'll rerun that pre-check and we'll see if it passes. Good to go. So everything was good. Everything passed. I'm going to hit next and click on deploy. Do a review summary. I'll also export the config. So if I ever need to redeploy, it's there for me. And submit. Away we go. Let's let that build out and we'll have a look at it once it's done. Or if it errors out, we'll fix it together. There you have it. 27 minutes, 46 seconds to do a complete deployment start to finish of the new logging platform and also gets integrated into operations. From a, from a vCenter level, we've got the appliance deployed, it's sitting on the network and it should be, if it didn't work in terms of the network it went onto and wasn't communicable, then the deployment would have failed. I can also do a quick ping check to make sure it does resolve it. Ping, this is log, um, there you go. So pinging is working. It's pinging the VIP. I can ping the node individually as well. Perfect. Now we've done, we've deployed the VCF logging appliance and it's integrated itself into VCF operations. In a future video, we're going to talk about what happens to all the logging data from a previous instance that you had, because we didn't upgrade. We didn't lift and shift that data. How do we get it across? Not in this one. This one is purely deployment focused and we're looking at upgrading the suite to VCF9, but we will look at it in a future video. Thanks for watching.